In this video, we'll explore the asset inventory in the OT base OT asset management system. There are additional functional areas such as vulnerability management, which won't be addressed. They will be covered in other videos. The asset inventory can be viewed from different angles, namely devices, software, systems, networks, and locations, all of which can be selected in the sidebar to the left. In this video, I'll go through all of these different areas. And if you want to skip to a particular um, description, you can use the chapter marks in the progress bar at the bottom. First, let's um, discuss all the other elements in this screen layout. On top here, you have the quick search field. Here you can enter IP addresses, MAC addresses, location IDs, network names, and so forth. And uh, then just hit enter to simply launch additional detailed information about this particular item. So if you are interested, for example, in anything about a network called HMI60, I just type in that name, hit enter, and that brings up the what we call the the network profile which includes uh, the vlan uh, address the location uh, the network topology the um, free ip address space uh, and the um, the ip address map and that uh, also works for individual devices locations and so forth and, and we will go back to that uh, later in the video to the right we have the main menu uh, where you can select your home screen, which is what you also see when uh, having logged on to OT Base, which um, gives you like a, a dashboard like overview of recent events, uh, such as new vulnerabilities. Then we have the inventory, which we are presently looking at. Then uh, you can go to the workflow, such as vulnerability management or change management. And lastly, here we have the user management. In um, this drop down menu to the right you can change your personal settings um, like um, the language that you have selected for display or change your password and you can also log out the question mark takes you directly to the online documentation of ot base in case you want to look something up okay so the the, the big part of the screen here uh, is consumed by the device list and since you are in the devices inventory and uh, you can um, already make some sense out of uh, what you have here by looking at the color code. So these color codes represent individual device types, such as uh, computers are always shown in, in a blue color. Network gear is shown in gray. PLCs and RTUs are shown in this uh, light violet. And then we have actuators in pink and so forth. This just gives you a very quick way to um, identify what you're looking at. So you see a bunch of actuators, a bunch of uh, network gear in this particular screen section. And this is like an endless scroll. So what you see here in the upper right corner, my device universe consists here of uh, roughly 10,000 devices. And this I could, if I wanted to, just endlessly scroll through these individual devices to the end of the list. Usually this uh, is not what I want to do. I want to narrow down the scope for a particular task at hand. And this can be done pretty easily by first using the scope selector here on top. So once that I click on this bar, I extend the scope selector, which now allows me to limit the scope to a particular location. For example, to devices located in the United States or even in a, in a particular site. I, I might go further down to a particular building or, or room or cabinet if I wanted to. And I could use also other criteria such as only display devices in a particular network or associated with a particular process. Here um, I can tell OT base if I want to see uh, devices in all lifecycle stages. Uh, the default is that we don't show decommissioned devices. Um, so you can check this box if you also want to see the decommissioned stuff um, and so forth. Let's look at the individual columns that we see here in this list. So at the left, we see the type, which is the device type, um, such as desktop or network switch or printer, PLC. Then we have the location, the device group, 
that is assigned by yourself. Those, so this gives you a way to categorize your systems. And just like the location, the device groups are hierarchical. Then we have the OT system association, which could be um, a, um, a production line. It could also be a DCS association, as you see here. So we have an assembly line. Uh, we have a lab system. Uh, then the network that, or the networks in plural that this device is homed in. IP addresses or field bus addresses can be multiple, as in these examples down here. Uh, then we have the device ID, which is a unique identifier within OT base. Uh, the name, which is usually the host name or the DNS name, vendor, the model identifier, serial number, operating system or firmware version, the lifecycle stage and the description. Now um, you can modify this by just um, doing a right click anywhere up there in, in that area. And as you see, there are additional columns available, such as when was the device last seen by OT base or uh, the process association. And you can also deselect um, columns. For example, if I'm not interested in the device group, I can just deselect that item and then it's gone. So talk, uh, talking about these columns, you can also rearrange column layout, for example, if uh, you want to see the location leftmost, then you can simply drag and drop it over there. And uh, there is your location in the left corner. So all these changes are persistent, which means that they will be reactivated when you log in the next time. Usually you um, want to filter the output a little bit further. And you can do so by simply entering some text in those filter fields below the column headers. And let's just assume we are interested in a particular type of Siemens PLCs. Once that I start typing, you see that um, the list is filtered in real time as I type. And uh, for the model, I can use a wildcard, this percent sign, and then just type in for, let's just say we are interested in a 412. And um, as a result, I only get um, those devices that match the filter, which are all my uh, S7412 CPUs within that scope. Okay. Um, now let's look at all the other buttons up here. First, there is this profile button, which you will uh, probably use most often. So this allows me to uh, get all the information about a particular device that is stored in our base by selecting the entry and then clicking on profile, which brings up the device profile that contains uh, things like the location map, if um, certain if, if added by the administrator the uh, system association, the life cycle stage, the uh, produce zone. By the way, this is um, this is entered automatically by OT base, so you don't have to do that manually. For PLCs, it, it will automatically place those devices in level one. Then uh, we have uh, information about the hardware, such as the version, the life cycle phase, also automatically the order number, serial number, link to the vendor catalog page, uh, the I.O. modules on the rack, so like the hardware configuration and so forth. We will get back to device details, uh, to device profiles later in this video. And um, you wouldn't even have to uh, use this profile button because you can actually achieve, achieve the same thing by just doing a double click on a particular entry that also launches the device profile. It's just for those who, uh, who are new to OT base uh, and, and don't know about this, this little trick. Next um, button here is the Excel export. This will store the uh, list that you see here as an Excel file. And that's all you need to do. Just click on the button and there you have your results that you see here in an Excel file. Next is the JSON import, which um, includes a little bit more information about the devices you have selected. So you would also see, for example, known vulnerabilities for each device. And this is important, particularly if you use the um, uh, OT-based add-on tools, such as the OT-based report writer and OT-based Vantage dashboard. But you could also 
post-process this data with a Python script, for example, because it is regular JSON. So it is not encoded in any way. It's supposed to be me uh, to be interoperable. The add button allows you to add devices manually. Uh, so if, if you cannot automatically discover a device because it's, it's disconnected from everything, you could enter all uh, the data that you want to store in OTBase manually, uh, including tags, connections, software, uh, data flow, and so forth. The next button is the clone button which is usually a little bit more advisable over the add button because in many cases, if you have to enter information about a device manually, uh, you don't have to start from scratch. You would just use a similar device such as, as, as another um, example of the same make and model and then only enter the differences like uh, different serial number, uh, different location and so forth. Edit allows you to change any device details manually. Uh, so if you want to associate a particular baseline uh, with the uh, with a device, as an example, or um, specify a process association, um, then you could do that using this edit dialog right here. Then we have the remove button, which would decommission a device. Uh, you can reset these filters that I, we have input here by clicking this button and the, which brings back the full list. Uh, you can request a change case which we won't cover here because uh, there will be a special video about the change management workflow and then you can, can filter by tags. Uh, so you can assign any number of tags uh, user defined to devices or networks or locations or whatever and um, then you can just use these tags and um, filter your output list. The last two items are about a very powerful functionality in the inventory, which is what we call views. So a view is basically a stored set of filter and scope conditions. And let me show you how this works. So this uh, works as a drop down here. And um, here I can pull my stored views. So as you see here, I have stored a view for a particular Cisco switch. And if I select this, uh, now all the stored filter settings will be applied and you can see those here. The, the scope pane has opened automatically to indicate what scope I am looking at. So presently I am looking at all the devices, all my universe. Let's um, use this, this second view here. This is about a particular set of PowerFlex VFDs in a particular version. And in this view, it's a little bit more complex. I have specified a location and I have also specified this model and a version identifier. So this list now shows me all um, PowerFlex 525s of version 5 or higher as the firmware. Okay, and this is uh, extremely useful for uh, use cases such as you, you have, want to process a vendor advisory. And uh, the vendor only tells you, well, you know, for your PowerFlex is 5 to 5 with uh, <laughs> firmware version 5 or higher, there, uh, there is this particular issue that you want to address. And um, then this view uh, allows you to pull the respective list in a matter of seconds. Now it even gets better. Um, so you can add as many views as you want and they can be as complex as they want in this manage views button. So anything that you have selected here, let, let's just uh, do a different example. So let's just say I'm only interested in firmware version 5.12, which narrows down uh, this list to one entry. And uh, now I say, you know, this is my, uh, my new view and this is PowerFlex 5.25 firmware 5.12. As you see here, I can now select if this view is supposed to be private or public. If I set it to public, all other OT-based users will be able to also use it. And then I just click on save current view. Before we move on, let's look at device profiles in more detail. 
Let's investigate this Rockwell PLC. And again, I just need to double click on the entry and that uh, launches the device profile. So in the general section, you have um, these, this general information, like when was the device last seen? Uh, if it is associated with an OT system, uh, you would see that up here, any safety uh, rating would be displayed here. And um, this is the uh, an indication of its location in a particular cabinet. We'll get back to that later in the video where I talk about locations. Then we have the extended section um, in which you can use your own fill fields, uh, your custom fields. And in this case, you're using the SAP material number. We'll get back to that later in the miscellaneous section of this video if you're interested in details. Here we have any tags. Uh, tags like um, Ethan IP and SNMP are assigned automatically by OTBase. Uh, they allow you to easily identify how a device was discovered. Then we have the hardware information, uh, the vendor model, maybe also a version, uh, the lifecycle phase. This is automatically placed there by OTBase also. So for certain vendors, we do maintain a database of product lifecycle stages. And um, if the lifecycle stage is known, then you will see it here. And if it's uh, um, uh, if it's uh, indicating that the device is no longer active, then it will also be highlighted in orange. Serial number, um, the description of the device, also this is taken uh, from catalog data, so uh, you don't need to manually add this information. Then we have the hardware configuration of this PLC, all the I.O. modules on the back plane with their particular version numbers and descriptions. Then we have the network connectivity. We can see right away to which switch this um, device is connected to. And uh, you can also do a drill down if you want to just by uh, double clicking on that switch. This will open the device profile of the switch. Then we have uh, software information. We see the firmware version. Uh, we have the security, cybersecurity details such as the known vulnerabilities. And uh, as you have seen earlier, uh, you can drill down into uh, all the items that are underlined. So if I want to explore the vulnerability, I just need to click on the link and this opens the vulnerability profile, which uh, not only tells me what this vulnerability is all about, but it also tells me where I would have other vulnerable devices. Uh, then we have the users responsible for this device, um, any files that somebody has attached to the entry, the, and the timeline, which um, is particularly interesting for engineers. So this is an automatic um, hist configuration history that uh, is maintained by OTBase. Let's look at uh, some example entries here. So the first entry, this is where the device was initially discovered by OT base and it shows us uh, all the individual hardware configuration details and software version etc that was identified and then uh, when we open this other entry here which were also was um, automatically created by OT base then we see that there was a change in the hardware configuration. So two new modules have been added to a new control net modules and um, the position of um, this IO module in uh, that it, that used to be in slot eight was changed. So, so that was uh, removed. Uh, we are going through a couple of different examples to give you really a feeling what device profiles in OT base are all about because this is where the beef is. So this is where you really see all the uh, all the, the the wealth of details of information that OT base maintains for you. So our next example is a Windows PC, and. Um, we also see that it's associated with an OT system. We could drill down into that, but I'll, I'll get back to OT systems in uh, the, the subsequent section of this video. I see there is a criticality assigned and I see a public exposure and we'll get back to that in a minute. Also, we have our SAP uh, material number as an extended field. We have tags, we have hardware information, we have the network connectivity 
And uh, here in this example, we also have data flow. So even though OTBase does not um, use span ports, it does not use passive sniffing, it can still tell you about data flow for devices and networks if your network gear is capable of NetFlow or SFlow. So both are um, functions of um, network switches, which will tell an agent or, or an, a NetFlow sync about the data flow between particular devices. Now, th this is not uh, the packet inspection. It's only associated, it's only information about the endpoints and the protocols used, but it's extremely valuable. And uh, in our opinion, uh, this is all you need to know in uh, to make sense out of data flow. You, you really don't need the packet inspection. So if you already see, for example, like here, well, I see a lot of HTTP and HTTPS traffic to public IP addresses, then you know that you have a problem without having to do the packet inspection. Uh, this is a graphical representation of the data flow. Uh, then uh, we have the, uh, I could go into details if I wanted to, so you can expand um, the the uh, address details for the data flow, but let's move on to the software. So here we have information about the operating system version that is installed. We see all the installed software applications, a lot of Siemens stuff, uh, which is automatically categorized by OT base as engineering software. Uh, then we have software components. Uh, then we have all the installed patches, where security patches are highlighted in pink. Uh, and we have services. Next section in the device profile is uh, the security section, where we learn about any security software that is installed on the device. Um, and we also see the security patch history. Uh, also in a in graphical form. So uh, this tells us that the last patch was um, installed over two years ago. And we see the, the frequency of the various um, patch events. And this gives us a very good idea straight away about the, the thoroughness of patching and, and uh, maybe patch policy compliance. Down here we see non vulnerabilities, which in this example, because you're talking about a Windows PC with uh, Windows 7, certainly is much larger than in the PLC example. Here we have the compliance section where uh, we are informed that this device is non-compliant with the baseline that we have identified. And again, we, we won't discuss baselines here. This is a different video, but just to give you an idea, if there is a non-compliance, you will see that automatically in the device profile. So this simply tells us, well, it, uh, this device should run Windows 10 Pro, uh, but in reality, it, it is running, I think it was Windows uh, 7. There you go, Windows 7 Professional. Um, and um, next would be the users. We have seen that already, files, timeline, and monitoring. Last example for device profiles is for a <clears throat> different PLC. In this example, what is really interesting is to investigate the data flow here, which is pretty, pretty typical for what you would expect to see in a, P, uh, in a PLC. So we only have um, data flow to local and private endpoints, which means uh, within OT base local is everything in the present subnet and private is uh, two other uh, subnets that are within the jurisdiction of the organization. So, and as opposed to public, which would be to the public internet. And uh, this traffic is pretty much what we would expect, a lot of Ethernet IP and then uh, it also um, distinguished between uh, usual Ethernet IP, uh, explicit and implicit messaging, some SSH, SSH SNMP and so forth. And um, what I would like to show you here is how you can investigate this map down here. Uh, just as an example, so our PLC is, is in the middle. And if we zoom in, then uh, we see additional details for these other endpoints which communicate with the device. Um, and when I when we hover over the link, we see the protocol used in the communication. Okay. And uh, this uh, really gives us a very good uh, idea of what's going on here. 
Next up is the hardware products list, which you can access by clicking on the products tab in the devices inventory. So now we are no longer looking at individual devices, but at OT products. And um, you can see the number of installations at in, in that first column here. So for example, for this PowerFlex VFD, we see that we have 150 installations. Where these installations are can be identified rather simply by launching the hardware product profile. And here I have a section which simply says installations. And now if I expand the um, entries for the sites, I see where those uh, individual devices are. As always, I can rearrange, re I can sort uh, the columns by clicking on the column header. And in the hardware product profile, you see the firmware dispersion here in the bottom. So this will tell me right away that I'm not fairly consistent with my firmware versions and I probably want to change that. Regarding the individual columns that you see here, so here is the, the vendor, the model, the version, which would be hardware version, order number, device type, uh, safety class, um, lifecycle information, end of life date and description. And as uh, in other tables that you have seen, you can customize the layout by selecting or deselecting individual columns. And you can also rearrange the sequence of columns using drag and drop. <clears throat> Let's look at a particularly useful column, which would be the life cycle. So here, if I just click on life cycle, the table gets resorted by life cycle information. And um, let's just um, inspect this. Uh, let's just uh, look at this guy here at uh, the, the Cisco Catalyst 2060-48TC-L. As always, do a double click to launch the device profile. And I see that this device or this model is discontinued. And I also see where uh, the those uh, discontinued devices are installed in case I want to replace them in an obsolescence management exercise. You can always go get additional vendor information right away by clicking on this vendor link, which is automatically provided by OTBase. And this takes me right away to the vendor's product site. Regarding the buttons here on top, well, uh, you can already imagine what these do. Profile would launch the product profile. Same thing as you would uh, achieve with a double click. Then you have Excel export and JSON export. If you prefer a more visual representation of your asset inventory, you will get that by clicking on the tree map, which gives you a tree map visualization of your product universe. And uh, this is divided at the top level by device type. So for example, we had actuators, PLCs and so forth. And here you can drill down by um, clicking on any of these elements. So for example, if I only want to see the PLCs and their distribution, this takes me to that next level. So now I only see PLCs and they are now subdivided by different vendors. So I see, uh, that I have a whole bunch of Siemens PLCs, uh, 762, whereas I have only 460 um, Rockwell PLCs. I can now further drill down into any of these products. Let's just take this one. And this takes me to the product profile for this individual model. And I can certainly also do the same thing for another model. Let's just take this one from Siemens and I can view those side by side. I see the installations as you have seen it already. To get back um, a level higher, you again click on this um, column header here. So this takes me back to the high level view. And you can also just drill down into any of these elements. Let's just take the Rockwell switches. Uh, from there, let's just go to um, these guys right here. So it's really, it really allows for a quick navigation in your inventory. Let's move to the software inventory to which we get by clicking software in the sidebar. 
The software inventory also contains two lists that you can select here on top with those two different tabs. By default, you get to the products tab, which shows you the list of installed software products. So not individual software installations. We'll get to that in a couple of minutes. You can filter and sort the software products list by different fields that you see here in the column headers. And certainly you can also customize the table by selecting or deselecting certain fields or columns that you are not interested in. As an example, let's search for Siemens PCS7 products. In order to do this, in the name field, we enter percent or wildcard PCS blank 7. And there is our list of installed PCS7 products from Siemens. In order to examine details, let's just pick this one right here and then either just double click or click on profile, which brings up the product profile for this product. And as you can see down here in the installation section, OTBase tells me right away where those products are installed. And I can always drill down. Let's just pick the first one right here first Windows PC and check if this is real. And there's our Siemens PCS7 installation. As another example, let's do a different filter. Let's only look at the operating systems. In, in order to do this, we deselect application from the category filter. And now I also have to delete the PCS7 because there is no operating system called PCS7. And we only want to see Microsoft products. So we enter MIC in the vendor field, which brings us a useful list of Microsoft operating systems. I want to draw your attention to the lifecycle column right here and also the end of support column. So for popular operating system versions and also other software products, OTBase has an internal database that um, has the lifecycle stage of a product available and displays this information here in the, in the lifecycle field and also in the software product profile, which you will see in a second. If we just pick Windows 7 Enterprise, double click, there is our product profile. And here you see the lifecycle phase. In this case, it is highlighted in orange because uh, OTBase wants to draw your attention to the fact that this particular operating system version is no longer supported by Microsoft. Down here you see the various installations and uh, here you see all the known vulnerabilities for this operating system version. Now let's move to the installations list. So by just clicking on that left tab right here. And so here, here is one thing that's very important to understand about the installation list. It is um, in a sense, a list of devices. So what you see here are software installations for software products, but the actual information refers to a device. So you would see right away, if you filter by a, by a specific product, Let's just say we are using uh, Adobe. We want to see all the Adobe products or just the Adobe Flash player. Where do I have Adobe Flash installed? Then in a sense, the output list is a device list, which I can then just export to Excel right away with the click of the mouse, or I can do some further analytics. So here I got all my flash player installations. And since this particular list and its filtering is so useful, we have also included the views functionality that you have seen already in the device inventory. So you can store these filter settings in a view. And this also includes the scope. So here we also have a scope pane. And as you have seen, I've pre-selected the scope to uh, focus only on the flat rock site. And all these filter settings can now be saved in a view. You see that I have already saved a couple of views. So I could pretty much achieve the same results by just loading 
my earlier saved view for Adobe Flash. And that's basically it. And uh, some other examples, uh, Rockwell RS links, I just use this view, which would now show all the RS links installations. Or let's just do that for Windows XP. And I see all the devices on which Windows XP is installed. And as you know it already, just pick an entry that you're interested in, do a double click. This launches the device profile. And sure enough, Windows XP is running as the operating system. Next, we look at the systems inventory in OTBase, to which we get by clicking on systems in the sidebar. And this may require a little bit of explanation before we go into the details, because you might not see, have seen that before. A, an OT system for OTBase is a set of OT devices which work in concert, which um, achieve an overarching functional purpose and uh, in, in, in that way also are interdependent. And the best example would probably be a, a production line in discrete manufacturing or a plant component uh, controlled by one particular DCS in the process industries. So you can tell OT base about your OT systems and I'll get back to that in a couple of minutes how this is actually done. And then you are going to see this list of systems as you see it right here in our example. Now let's go through this list uh, column by column. First, the number of devices that already tells you that for this particular system that you then see here, there are, let's just take the, the first example, 164 OT devices that make up this OT system. Then we have an ID and a name. You have to use a system name, but you don't necessarily have to use a system ID. And this is just for practical purposes. In some organizations, uh, OT systems are referenced by um, very non uh, very non intuitive IDs uh, because that's just the way it is, um, and then you have a a name that is usually much more intuitive by which a system is referred to by the engineers. The process location tells the user where the process is located that is controlled by this OT system, and we make this distinction to the um, OT or to the location of the OT devices, because as you will know, this is not necessarily one and the same. So uh, the OT systems do, do not necessarily need to be directly in the in line in the production line, for example, or they don't need to be directly in the plant system that is controlled. They, they can be elsewhere in a different room, in a PLC room, for example. And if, in, in order to make this clear to which um, plant component you are referring to, we, we are introducing this process location. And um, you can filter this list by process location, which is very simple because once that you open this drop down, you see your location tree um, that we will get back to later. The OT system group allows you to tell your users that not every OT system is equal. Um, so it, uh, it really makes the whole automation technology universe a little bit easier to understand if you point out, for example, that this is a support system. So this is a scrapper. It has nothing to do with the final product. These are uh, production lines that do produce final product. And then you may have another line that does an intermediate product, or it's just about material flow. And you can define as many system groups as you want and also assign custom color codes. We'll get back to that later in the video in the section on uh, miscellaneous stuff. Then to the right here, all these four fields, they're all about the approval management that's built into the uh, OT system functionality in OT base. And, and that's actually quite a powerful function because it allows you to baseline your system configuration and uh, quickly check if your system as it is, is still con conformant with the baseline as it was approved at some point in time. So you can see right away here that all these systems with a check mark, they are approved. 
but this particular system here is no longer approved so there is a violation of configuration integrity uh, this is important because somebody might have changed the configuration of even a single device uh, may be in the most beneficial intention that you can imagine. For example, think about a contractor that um, when on site also, uh, besides anything else, uh, did a firmware update on a couple of PLCs or RTUs um, without necessarily telling you. And then OT base would automatically flag that as a violation of system integrity and uh, this is something that you would also see in the home page you could also get a notification by email but here in this list you will see right away well this system is no longer conformant with its baseline so let's look at system profiles certainly by selecting the system and then clicking on profile or doing the double click and a system profile contains a lot of information about the system and this is why it is so useful because it consolidates all the information from the individual OT system components and gives engineers who are responsible for that system really pretty much all they need to know about the system configuration. So let's go through this rather quickly. The general information shows you for example the process location, then you have extended fields uh, that which which are just custom fields that you can define and we'll also get back to that later in the video and here is the release management part so if you are using release management ot base will inform you about all approved releases in the initial release you would find all the um, individual components that have been added in the in the subsequent releases you will find the changes that have been approved. And in the next example, we will see how that looks like for a non-compliant system configuration. Then you can have some tags. Um, you have the network topology for uh, the whole system. And um, you have uh, the networks that are associated with any system component. And this is something you're going to see that in a minute that auto, that OT base pulls together for you automatically. So this the, all of this is um, created automatically. You don't have to manually tell OT base that all these networks have something to do with the net uh, with the system. Then you have a port list. And that port list is also automatically created by OT base. Um, and it's made up of all of the switches that are connecting any of the endpoints that belong to the OT systems. And the best thing is that you can also expand any of those switches. And now you see why it's called a port list, because it not only shows you the basic details about the switches and their location, etc., but it really also shows you the detailed port list. So I would see, for example, that this operator panel RSU is connected to port number one of this switch. Okay, and that works for any of the switches. And if you're wondering, the color codes they have to do with. Uh, your network groups and we'll get to that uh, in the next section on the network inventory. Okay, then we have a list of the endpoints and uh, what you also see here is the, the uh, approval column, which is also available here. So um, when, when, when we are looking at a non-conformant system where uh, and system integrity was violated, you would see right away which individual devices are non-compliant. Now, this also is uh, heavily associated with the network layout because for every individual device, you can see to which other network component it is connected to. This column right here, connected to, this is a different device and this is the name of the remote device and you might also see a remote port if it's about a switch and in this case you're looking at actuators and at uh, at tabs 
As with most tables in OT base, you can sort by clicking on a column header, or if you're interested in the vendors. This also works for the remote devices. And next section is a bill of materials that um, OT base builds out automatically for you. So it, it just pulls out all the different uh, models, uh, hardware models that have been used in this system and it um, tells you about the count of each of the models. Then you have something similar for software, long list that we won't go through, the, the responsible users and you can attach um, files, any number of files to the OT system such as documentation, uh, which can be opened by the user with a click of the mouse. So uh, look at, let's look at another example, like this one right here, where we see that the system no longer conforms with its baseline. And for such an example, if I open the release management, I uh, see that the current configuration is not approved and this is all inserted automatically by OTBase. So um, I see the changes um, compared to the approved release. And this would then allow me to investigate in detail what has happened. Let's look at the buttons here on top. Uh, we have discussed the profile already. And the topology is all about network topology, which you have seen already when uh, we opened this device, uh, excuse me, the, the system profile right here. But uh, the difference is that this topology button here gives you much more flexibility for the topology and I'll show you how this works. So in, in this topology view that I'm opening here, you really have complete flexibility um, of, of what you can do. You can choose between a couple of different layouts and you have more real estate to work with. So. Uh, this is something um, that you have seen earlier in the diagrams in OT base. We have this uh, detail reveal on zoom so that you see additional details for the devices if you zoom in. And um, then the, the next uh, goodie is in, in this topology window here, uh, you can also do searches. For example, if I'm interested in a particular model, such as in the ETABs, I can simply type in ETAP and my ETABs will be highlighted as I type. Or just as another example, if, if you're looking for anything that's related to Unit 2, you would input Unit 2. And there I would get my my devices highlighted that have something to do with unit two. As I said, you can experiment with different layouts. This is the, the basic layout, which usually yields the best overview of a network topology. But uh, let's just assume you're interested in how these devices are associated with physical locations. I, and I can simply rearrange the layout by picking locations from the layout dropdown. And then my layout is changed to reflect the locations of the devices. So for example, all the devices in this box here, they're all within unit four. As you may have seen already, uh, if you hover over a component, the connections to other components will be highlighted in orange. And at any point in time, you can do a drill down by double clicking on a component, which pulls up the device profile, but that also works within the topology map that you have seen in the, in the system profile. Let's do another layout, uh, hierarchy. This is your Purdue hierarchy. And uh, finally, let's check out the networks topology. Uh, which will now group the um, the OT devices in respect to their layer 3 network association. So everything 
that is um, associated with this drive 60 network is placed in this box, whereas everything that is placed in the HMI network is placed in this other box. The, the color codes that you see here, they correspond with the network groups that we will discuss in a minute when we get to the network inventory. Finally, you can export these diagrams to um, Visio just by clicking the mouse and, and then um, post-process those diagrams within Visio or just uh, share it with your coworkers. Let's look at the additional buttons. Add would allow you to add a new system. Then you can clone a system. And uh, this um, leads us to a very powerful workflow for system design. So if you are tasked with um, designing a system that basically corresponds to an existing system, you can save hours or even days of work if you use that exist, existing system as a template and uh, just apply a couple of changes. The edit button allows you to edit major system characteristics um, such as the system group that I've mentioned earlier, where you can assign your system group. And uh, we'll get back to the system groups in the miscellaneous section of the video, where I show you how you can define your custom system groups along with custom color codes. You can also assign tags to a system, your extended fields, you can attach files, and um, you can change your system configuration as you go because you can add different uh, new devices here. You can also clone existing devices. That brings me to the last uh, topic um, about OT systems, which would be how you actually build out these systems. This is very, very simple because what you do is you tell OT base, usually in the device inventory, that a couple of devices belong to that particular system. That's all that you need to do. And uh, the, the easiest way to do that is to filter your device list. And when you have arrived at a reasonable filter scheme, then you multi-select all of the devices that you want to associate with a system. I'm just doing it randomly here in the interest of time. Then you click on edit, which which brings up the, the bulk edit function. And then all you do is in the in, in this field right here where the OT system is OT system is specified, you click on the drop down and then you can pick from any existing system, like this one right here. And now if I click on save. All those devices are then part of the OT system known as TCON. And that's it. And um, the functionality that you see here in, in this area is then uh, all added automatically by OT base. So that's the only step you need to do. You just associate given OT devices with a system and OT base does all the rest. Next, let's check out the network inventory in OT base, to which we get by clicking on networks in the sidebar. This takes us to a network list that is automatically created by OT base based on the discovered networks in your environment. And uh, if you're wondering about the fancy color codes here, they represent different network groups. Uh, just for example, safety is uh, something that you may want to highlight. And therefore, we, are, we have assigned the safety networks to this safety network group. And we are using the red color code to make them stand out. And I'll get back to that in the miscellaneous section of the video, where I explain how you can assign your own network groups and also any custom color codes that you might already have. So every single entry represents one network. And uh, we start out here uh, with the location. You can filter your list for a specific location. Here we are looking at uh, all the networks in, in the USA. But uh, for example, if you're only interested in a particular site, such as this flat rock site, you would just select it from the tree. Uh, you could also pick uh, the networks in a particular building if you wanted to, or uh, 
let's just go back to another site where we have something more to work with. Then the number of devices in uh, in particular network, the network name, the network group, I have talked about that earlier. The network type is about, is this an IP network or is it a, a field bus network? OT-based not only supports TCP IP networks, but also a couple of field buses such as ControlNet or Profibus. And if you wanted to filter for those, you can use this column right here. The address in the case of IP networks, this would be the IP address followed by the net mask or the number of bits in the net mask um, divided by a slash. Then the VLAN ID also, this is um, discovered automatically by OT base. A description which hopefully um, is useful for you. So, so this is what you would edit as a metadata item so that you and your co-workers, maybe also including contractors, really get a good idea right away what this network is all about. And finally, we have this usage column here with a graphical representation of how much address space is used up in this network. And this is also maintained automatically by OTBase since OTBase knows based on the net mask how many devices or how many addresses fit into that network. And it also knows how many devices are in there. It, uh, it informs you about the uh, used address space. You can customize the table as usual by doing a right click on any column header. You can also rearrange the order of the columns using grab, drag and drop as you have seen earlier and you can resort the entries by just clicking on a column header. So let's look at the buttons up here. Uh, you can already guess what profile means. This would give me the network profile for a network which I could also pull up by just doing a double click on that entry. And the network profile starts with its general section, informs me about the network group, the VLAN ID, the location and a description. Then I get a topology diagram, which you have seen already fully interactive. Then I get uh, information about the address space usage. This tells me that from my address pool, 19% is used up and I also get the, the spare IP addresses listed down here. Then we have the address list starting with the first address and uh, then moving down to the last address. The green um, entries here, they represent spare addresses, whereas anything else represents an, an assigned IP address. And we are using the um, color codes for device types that you have seen already. So down here, for example, those would be network switches, whereas the pink stuff here is actuators. And you can always drill down into a given device uh, by just clicking on the device ID. This then brings up the device profile for that particular device so that you can investigate further. Finally, you can also attach files to networks as we have seen it here and uh, you can open the file then as a user by just clicking on it and this would then open the file in the appropriate application such as Microsoft Word or uh, or in a PDF viewer. Next up is the topology button and uh, this works similar to what you have seen already in the systems inventory but it's a little bit more flexible because you can select multiple networks and do a joint topology. This is particularly Particularly useful if you are interested in how multiple networks interconnect. So let me show you how this works. Uh, we have selected this one right here. We also select um, this other network down here and I simply do this by doing control left click and then I click on topology and this now creates a, a joint diagram for both networks. This is interactive as you have seen it earlier. And here I only see uh, the layer one connections. If I want to see the network boundaries, I can click on networks so to do a network layout. And this shows me the devices in this one network as opposed to the other to the devices in that other network. And certainly the interesting point is how are these networks interconnected, which I see right, right away here in this diagram because this switch is the one that connects to the various e-tabs. Other things that you might be interested in, um, I can also show the adjacent networks. 
which brings up a couple of additional networks that are somehow connected to these two networks and the um, adjacent networks are then represented by these ovals. And as always, I can get further information by doing a drill down, in this case by doing a double click. Other stuff that you could do, um, as you have seen it earlier, you can sort by locations or change the layout by locations. Uh, do an organic layout and you can export that to Visio by clicking on this button. The list that you see here can be exported to Excel by clicking this button. By clicking on add, you could add manually add networks, which is something that you rarely do because as I said earlier, all of this stuff is discovered automatically. A typical example would be if you're designing a new system. So um, you want to specify a network with a given characteristic and it cannot be automatically discovered because it, it doesn't exist already in real life. In order to ease this process, uh, you can also do a clone of an existing network, which means that you wouldn't have to specify all the characteristics manually. Then you can edit a given network and this has mostly to do with uh, like the description, the network group, you can pick from the networks groups that you have um, specified earlier and we'll get back to that. You can specify the location of a network if it's if it isn't um, automatically assigned yet. Uh, you can attach any files that you like, maybe some documentation. This button right here is of particular importance because um, it allows me to mask public IP addresses. And here is why this is interesting. As you have seen earlier, OTBase also analyzes your data flow if you are using NetFlow or SFlow. And every now and then it happens that um, an organization chooses to use public IP addresses for internal networks, which is not really a good idea, but it is done anyway. And um, if you want to prevent that OT base will raise the alarm and, and tell you that uh, you are engaging in, in uh, traffic with devices on the public internet. You can inform OT base about some public addresses that they're really semi private. So they are not on the public internet. You are using them internally and you would simply put all these addresses in this list right here. Then you save that list and then your um, semi private addresses will not result in those particular devices to be um, identified as having public exposure, which is very important for um, doing your risk analysis. Up here, you see two additional tabs that we are also going to cover. The protocols tab is also related to data flow. And this is uh, just a long table um, with all the discovered data flow if you're using NetFlow or SFlow. And if you want to, you can change the descriptions for these individual entries. And finally, this uh, last tab up here, Observe Data Flow. This is a um, comprehensive list of all the data flow that OTBase has detected. And certainly what you may want to do is uh, when, when you're analyzing data flow, you can use these, these filter fields up here to search for specific traffic that you're interested in. So for example, if I'm investigating any SMB traffic, I could see right away which my devices used SMB. Next, let's check out the location directory in OTBase, to which we get by clicking on locations in the sidebar. The locations directory is structured as a tree and you can define this tree with arbitrary depth. You see that some of the items here are highlighted in boldface and they stand for what we call reference locations. That simply means that um, these these locations will be will have a, a special function in hardware product profiles or software product profiles 
where they are used for aggregation so that you would be able to see right away well uh, these particular hardware products uh, i have let's just say n installations of those in flat rock in that particular site so usually that refers to a production site um, but um, if you're only managing one site with ot base that probably wouldn't make a lot of sense so in that scenario you could use reference locations to refer to individual buildings or plant components or whatever makes sense for you. So as you see, arbitrary granularity, you can go down to rooms, cabinets, floors, whatever makes sense for you. In order to get additional information about a location or a sublocation, you select the entry and then instantaneously you also see already a couple of details here in the right pane but um, even more interesting is the location profile we'll, we'll get back to to this area here in a minute let's first check out the location profiles and we do that by clicking on profile or we could also have achieved the same result by doing a double click on that location in a location profile, you might see a map of that location, which in this case, obviously, <laughs> is uh, simply a map of the US. And um, then you have the next level of sublocations highlighted by hotspots. And when you hover over these hotspots, you get additional details in a pop-up. And that could be a picture of the sublocation. And usually you also get the number of devices in that sublocation. In order to navigate there, you just do a click and that takes you to the location profile of that sublocation. Let's go through this rather quickly. So here you have the general information, um, like the address, the, the, the postal address. If you click on here, you are taken to Google Maps. Then you may have a floor map for that location and it works in, in the very same way. So any sublocations are highlighted by hotspots. And if you hover over a hotspot, you see the number of devices, maybe also a picture, and you could sub navigate there just by clicking the mouse. Then we have a network topology for this site. Then we have the network list um, and you can always drill down. So let's just say you're interested in that network, just click on it, takes you to the network profile. Uh, then you have the systems at that location. And finally, all the devices from which you can again do a drill down and now it makes more sense what you have seen earlier, this floor map for a device profile. This is a partial map from the location map because you only see that sublocation where this device is actually located in. So it wouldn't make sense to show you all the hotspots here, but only the one where this particular actuator is located. There are other ways how you can display a location profile. So for example, you can use the location name or location ID in the quick search. So for example, if I just input Detroit and hit enter, then this gives me the location profile for Detroit. Now let's see how you can define this tree, how you can restructure it. Let's just assume we want to add a new room so in in flat rock let's say we want to add a room that is called server room 100 and we, we first we, we select flat rock because we want to place it in there then we click on add server room 100 and there is our new server room if we had made a, a mistake so for example this is actually supposed to be within the paint shop then you can drag the, the room to where it actually belongs. So we just drag and drop it in there. And there you have it. How can we identify this as a hotspot in the map? Well, very simple. Let's go over to this pane over here and click on edit, assuming that we have the authority to do so, which is managed in the user management of OTBase. 
So uh, here we can edit all the metadata, such as the name, the description. I, I couldn't click reference location for this one because we already have a reference location in that same branch of the tree. Because So we already have told OT base, well, you know, flat rock is a reference location. So anything below there cannot be tagged as a reference location. Um, I don't need address GPS, etc., because that is all inherited from this reference location. And the map can be modified here. This works simply by using a right click where in this pop-up menu here, you can do a couple of things. You can upload your floor map and that could be a bitmap or an SVG. In our example, we want to place a new hotspot. So we click on place hotspot. And once that I've done that, I get this new menu, which gives me a choice between all the hotspots that I can place here. And if you pay attention over to the left, this is exactly the sublocations that OTBase knows about for this sublocation. So I can pick from any of these. And uh, since I want to place my new server room 100, I pick this one. And I can now move this around by using drag and drop, as simple as that. So let's just assume I want to place it down here in this corner. That looks good to me. And um, then I can save my edits and then check out the changed location profile. Open the map and there is my new server room. Finally, let's look at some miscellaneous functions. In the import section, you can manually import discovery results from OT-based asset discovery. Usually you don't do this manually because in production mode, asset discovery will automatically upload the files to OT-based asset center. In any case, here in this import log, in a production system, you will see all the various import actions and you can obtain details on, for example, the devices that have been newly discovered or about any configuration changes and so forth. In the CVE tab, you see the number of CVEs in the database, or CVE stands for known vulnerabilities, and for the rare occasions where you cannot automatically download the CVEs from NIST, you here have the opportunity to manually import the CVE definitions that you have obtained by other means. For, for So for example, from a different station to attached to a different network where internet access is possible, here you get um, the, the sample URL where you can download the um, CVE definitions as a file. Then you can manually upload all those CVEs and you will see that reflected in this diagram. However, this technically is not necessary. So usually what happens is that OT-based Asset Center downloads new CVE definitions from NIST automatically every 24 hours. And then finally in GSDML, you can upload GSTML files to Asset Center, which will give you product metadata on devices that have been discovered within Profibus segments. Next, we have the extended section. And this is a little bit more interesting because here is the place where you can add custom stuff, custom metadata to OT base. Let's start with the device groups. So here you can just tell OT base about any other metadata categories that you want to use to subdivide your OT universe. And what you do here is totally up to you. Then we have the network groups that we have discussed a couple of times in this video already. And here you can simply define your own network group. So what, what you see here is not like a, a standard nomenclature that is used in OT base. This is defined by the user. You can define any number of network groups. You can give it any name you want, and uh, you can also use any color code that you want. And it works simply like this. You click on add to edit a group. Then you use a name like my new network group. Then you can pick a color from this palette. Let's just use this one. You could also provide a description and then you click on save. 
And then this new network group can be assigned to your networks and those networks and the devices in them will then show in this blue color. Then we have the system groups that works very similar. You can define any number of system groups that you want and you can also assign color codes to your system groups. Then we have the physical processes and this gives you a way to express what physical function a particular OT device might have. So for example, if you also include building automation products in your inventory, then you could place all those devices that have something to do with ventilation in this process group. This would give you a means by filtering all those devices across different sites, across different systems, etc. So this would give you a means to filter out anything that has to do with ventilation. Or if you would do that on the next higher level, filter out anything that has to do with HVAC and so forth. And finally, you have the custom fields area. And this is where you can add new database fields to OTBase, which comes handy if you find yourself in a situation where you say, well, you know, I, I really like the OTBase asset inventory, but they forgot about a couple of things that are important to our organization. In our example, the administrator has defined a couple of custom fields and I get additional details. If I just select any of these entries, then you see the details over here. This one is called color code and it has predefined values, which would be blue, green and red. And they are attached to the devices. So as you see, there are different areas to which you can attach those custom fields. This one would show up in the extended section of devices but I could also switch that to location or other area. So as another example, this field right here is attached to hardware, which means hardware products for which it apparently makes sense, would well, make sense for software. And then you have also custom fields for systems and for users. If you are using a URL, by the way, it will automatically be made clickable in your profiles. Last but not least, let's go over to search. This leads us to a very complex and very powerful search page, which you can use to do elaborate searches in your asset inventory. And the idea is that for complex searches, you, you wouldn't need to learn a database language. So you can pretty much select everything that you want to use by a click of the mouse. And that's basically it. Then you hit search down here and OT base will perform the search and output the results in the table down here. And from there you can do your Excel export, launch a profile and so forth. The reality is that you will probably never use that elaborate search page because it is so simple using all the existing filter means in the table that we have discussed in this video. And from there, just following the all the various hyperlinks that you will probably never need the more sophisticated search options. So that's it. There you have it. Our grand tour through the asset inventory in the OT base OT asset management system.